Hello and welcome back to New Zealand for another few minutes of advanced data mining with Weka. Uh, in lesson 1.4 we're going to continue our exploration of the time series forecasting package. In the last lesson I showed you some graphs which I actually made with Excel for the purposes of presentation. But the time series forecasting package can make such graphs itself. And we're going to show you how to look at the output of the, of the package. So I think you should restart the Explorer just to get the reinitialize uh, all of the uh, options in the time series forecasting stuff. And uh, load airline.arf. Uh, I've done that. Uh, I'm going to uh, go to forecast and click start here. Uh, and uh, we get this output which we haven't looked at before train future predictions it's called and you can see this is a graph actually of passenger numbers and if you look very carefully you can see that uh, these are square uh, data points and the very last one is a round data point that's a predicted passenger number we're only predicting one time unit here but we can change that let's go up to the interface and change the number of time units to forecast to say 12 and try again and now you can see that we've got these kind of 12 predicted points and a dashed line so we're for forecasting ahead from the end of the the uh, data the training data uh, let's go to uh, the lag creation panel and remember we removed the leading instances with unknown lag values that'll remove the first 12 uh, instances and we can do that again. Actually, it doesn't affect the graph. We still get the same graph, but we know that the first 12 instances are not being used to create the model. Coming back to the slide, if you think about the timeline like this, here's the kind of data set, uh, that kind of top line. And then underneath, we've got the dashed line with the leading instances, 12 of them. Uh, and then the uh, training data for future predictions. And then the future predictions uh, leading ahead uh, after the end of the data set. All right, now let's do some evaluation here. We're going to evaluate on the training data and on 24 held out instances. So I'm going to go to the evaluation panel and evaluate on the training data and 24 held out instances, two years worth, and run that. And now I get the uh, train future predictions output here, which uh, ends at the end of the training data and then shows us the uh, future 12 future predictions from that point. So coming back to the slide, we've got the data set. We've got the training data now, uh, which is uh, all of the data set except for the last 24 instances. And the future predictions from the training data is the dashed kind of line there. And then if we look at the other output here, going back to Weka, test future predictions. You can see now we've got the test data here and future predictions from the end of the test data, these kind of dashed, this dashed line with the round points. So coming back on the slide, we've got the whole data set. Uh, and then we've got the training data. And then we've got the test data and future predictions from the end of the test data, that is, after the end of the data set. Uh, now, it would be nice to see the uh, one step uh, ahead estimates for the test data. There's a lot of graphing options here. First of all, I'm going to turn off the evaluation on training because that's just going to kind of give us too much data to look at. Uh, let's just look at evaluating on the, uh, on the test data. I'm not going to graph the future predictions at all. And now if I run this, I get no graphical output. There's nothing, right? So let's turn on graph the predictions at step one and run it. And now you can see here the test predictions for the target. You can see in blue the predicted passenger numbers and in red the actual passenger numbers. So we can see there the discrepancy on the uh, test data between the one step ahead predictions and the actual data itself. We're going to then uh, do a little bit more on this panel. We're going to graph the predictions at step 12. That is 12 step ahead predictions. And then we're going to compare one step ahead, six steps ahead, and 12 step ahead predictions. So let's go back here. I'm going to graph 
the target. Uh, no, I'm going to graph predictions at step 12. And now I, of course, get worse predictions because we're predicting 12 steps ahead. You'd expect that to get worse. And there's a consistent error where they kind of undershoot the actual data values because, of course, with multi-step ahead predictions, with any step ahead predictions, once you make an error on the first prediction, then that error kind of continues to propagate uh, through the future predictions. Let's graph the target. We've only got one possible target here. If we had other attributes, we could graph them, but we're just going to graph passenger numbers at step 12. And actually, that's going to give the same result. So I've got two graphs here, the one we had before, and the new one, which looks exactly the same. Uh, however, you can do better things here. I'm going to turn the old one off just to stop too much confusion. And I'm going to graph, we can put in a comma-separated list of numbers here. So I'm going to graph one step ahead, six steps ahead, and 12 steps ahead predictions. And now you can see them in different colors. The uh, difference between one step ahead predictions, the most accurate, that's the blue line, six steps ahead predictions, which is the green line, and uh, yellow, which is considerably worse, and 12 step ahead predictions, which is a bit worse still, the yellow line. You can compare predictions different points ahead. Now I'm just going to improve these predictions. Uh, uh, just to finish off, I'm going to go to my base learner and change it from linear regression to SMO, uh, which uh, we found in one of the activities was uh, tended to be better than linear regression. And let's have a look at that. You can see those predictions are uh, quite a bit better than they were with linear regression. And let's go and change. We, we're using this large model with a large number of attributes here. Uh, I'm going to uh, reduce the number of attributes. I'm going to just use a lag of 12. And then I'm going not to include powers of time. I'm not going to include products of time and lag variables. And I'm going here and I'm going to customize this by not including any of these periodic attributes. If I run this again, well, I've got a much simpler model here. This is the model based on just the date and the lag by 12. And now if I look at those graphs that I saw before, well, you can't see them. You can't see them because they're all on top of each other. It's predicting the red and it's plotting the red and the blue last and the uh, green and the yellow are kind of hidden uh, underneath the one step ahead predictions. So I've showed you several different options for visualizing time series predictions. And uh, we talked about the need to distinguish different parts of the timeline, the initialization part with the leading instances, uh, which contain unknown values for the lagged variables. Uh, extrapolation past the end of the data set into future predictions. The full training data. The test data, if evaluation is specified. And the training data with the test data held out. And uh, we extrapolate past the end of that for so-called future predictions based on the training data. And we showed how you can look at different numbers of steps ahead when making predictions. You can uh, read more about this in uh, a, a document about the time series analysis and forecasting package with Weka, uh, referenced there at the bottom. And uh, now it's time for you to go and have a look at the activity associated with this lesson, which will sort of take you through some of the different output options, but looking at the textual output rather than the, gra rather than the graphical output. So good luck with that, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.